So I just wanted to look at the whole modeling football as a fossil model side of things. So I have the link to this in the description below the video. And you can see why people might use the Poisson distribution. So here we have home goals, Poisson versus actual. And you can see that they're pretty much the same. Actually, does it have the legend just telling me which one is the real one and which is the Poisson? Anyway, so essentially one, I'll say the blue one, is the actual gold scored. And this is from, what, nearly 40,000 games. And the other one, say the green one, is a Poisson distribution where the average is 1.5042. So I just look at, I just count the number of goals that are scored by the home team in a league. And if I just give that number, the Poisson distribution tells me how many times I'd expect no goals to be scored. One goal, two goal, three goal, four goal, five goal, six goal, seven. And as you can see, it matches with what actually happened nearly perfectly, incredibly well. So that's why people are happy to go and go, oh, so if, if I just know the average number of goals that this team tends to score, then I have a good idea about what the probability that it's going to score one, two, three, four, or whatever goals. So I can use the Poisson distribution to predict how many goals I expect the team to score. And so I can actually do that for both sides and predict how many goals I expect the home team and the away team to score. And if I know that, well, that's all I need to know. If I know the first team, home team's going to score three goals, the away team's going to score one, well, then I know I expect the home team to win. I expect I'm going to get three or more goals. I'm going to get both teams to score. You know, so I can generate, as I do in my simulator, 100,000 games predicting the goals from for both the home and the away team and I can count how often the various results occur so you know it's not complicated at this level so we can see you know um, home team goal distribution Poisson versus actual so the Poisson distribution says I mean, if the average is 1.5042. Oh, so the blue is Poisson and the green is actual. And we can, the actual numbers are here. So instead of 22.22% of the time zero goals are going to be scored, actually it was 22.56. I can live with that. You know what I mean? So you can see that the gaps are tiny i would also i would say you know can i predict so if i know over the season this is the number of goals that were scored i can you know looking through the rear rear view mirror i can go oh well what all the games that happened during this season followed this distribution but does that then translate to being able to predict what's going to happen in the future? So, you know, we're, we're, 
we're kind of doing that on on the channel you know uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to build up a bigger database of what predictions I make using the Poisson model and then comparing that to what actually happens so then I can kind of go oh my model is saying you know my model expected that three goals would be scored but actually only two goals were or one goal was and once I have you know 20 30 40 50 or whatever games then I can produce plots I can analyze the model which is trying to forecast so and oh okay, so so we looked at this was the distribution of home team goals and you know it matches to Poisson very well if I look at the away goal distribution that also matches incredibly well so you know it's just off by a, less than a percent a, a fraction of a percent so very encouraging here we can actually also plot what the final score is expected to be and when we do that we find that there are kind of certain things that um, where, where the model tends to be most wrong so let's have a look here um, now you can see here it's matching like the actual results are happening pretty much like the math maths expected results are so you know that zero zero has the biggest gap I think that's 1.2 percent otherwise normally okay one two is a bit off 0.6 percent I don't know why what that difference thing is because that doesn't seem to <laughs> make sense but anyway yeah so two one seems to be off oh, or is one two off yeah no okay so two one is okay 9.2 against 9.1 uh, one two tends to be off zero zero is off and zero one yeah zero one that's one percent so they're they're the three scores which have the biggest error biggest disagreement between what our Poisson model says and what we actually find okay so as I said the link is in the this the link to this article is in the description below the video so you know you can have a look at it yourself this is another article from a plus magazine I normally use that talking to uh, school students this is about um, encouraging maths but they had this article and this is in 2009 about using um, the Poisson model predicting uh, scores this actually is more advanced because it actually does mention uh, the bivariate Poisson model is popular and can be fitted using free programs the bivariate Poisson model is from what I know the best one I mean it's better than Poisson anyway but I, I haven't actually implemented it yet myself so I'll get there down the uh, later in the year probably what's encouraging is you know they were given a, a challenge and they had to predict the last 10 games and they actually predicted predicted better than the local football pundit so that's encouraging because you know that suggests that this is um, using this kind of mathematical modeling does do well 
this page in particular was interesting to me what's this uh, 29 how come these are adding up to over 100 38 anyway the percentage probability of each result now say so the reason this was interesting to me is because I probably mentioned in some of my videos you know I'm trying to calibrate what the signals are so I would have at the moment I'm more going for if the signal is 70 or higher then I that that to me is bettable and that would match that would have worked well in this data set so you know because you don't have to bet on every game so here the system said Arsenal is expected to win 72 times so that's higher than 70 if you bet on that you would have won in every case in this and again this is only a sample of 10 but if you're restricted restrictive if you only pay attention if something happens more than 70 times or maybe more than 65 times 65 or higher yeah you'll have to mess experiment mess around a bit but because basically I in my examples as I was putting them into Excel I began by betting on something if it was higher than 50 but that's you know a very close call you know I, I wasn't very happy with that so I was happy that on this page this was also giving similar results to what I'd seen myself but this person is was using the bi bivariate puzzle model which is better than the puzzle it 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 reduces the some of the edge effects and some of the errors that occur with the puzzle though you know they're small errors I mean so it's not it's not that um, the, the puzzle model is totally useless I like the fact also they mention these types of models have been refined over the years and are now used by bookies and sports betting companies who employ experienced statisticians and make use of the latest computational methods that's just a reminder that okay these techniques are nice and it's interesting but remember that the people who are the bookies who are setting the odds are using far better models you know so these 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 tools give us better insight than if we hadn't used them but it, it they don't give us magical uh, superpowers that give us odds predict odds better than what the bookies are so that's just a quick recap of you know the whole Poisson uh, models as applied to football I'll keep doing I'll keep applying the basic Poisson model that I have and recording them on my Excel spreadsheet so then and so then I can see myself what its track record is.